Welcome back everybody, Clyde here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for joining us in today's Twinkle Tip Friday video. Yes, it's Friday again, and here we are recording a new video for you guys because I have some information to share about X schedule and maybe some ways that you could improve your ability to output your lights and get your show running the right way. Stay tuned, I got some troubleshooting tips and some exciting information. Don't go anywhere. Guys, I have here on this piece of paper a, a lot of things. Actually, I have two two sheets of paper here because I have a bunch of things that I really want to discuss about X schedule. And why do I want to talk about X schedule? Well, I know for a fact that two out of ten people out there, maybe maybe two and a half, maybe twenty five people, twenty five percent of the community is using X schedule. Now, I can't imagine for the life of me why, because X schedule is just the absolute easiest thing to use. But I will say that there are a lot of issues that people run into in X schedule. And what I've done is I've taken a moment to write them all down. And I'm going to walk through some of these challenges and show you some of the things that maybe you could do to have better fortune whenever running X schedule. But I want to share with you that we run a significant number of shows every year. We're talking 20, 30, 35, 40 shows every season run exclusively off of X schedule. We have this many major problems with them. We have a little bite here or there because I scheduled something wrong or I didn't put the time in correctly. But that's a user error that is not an X schedule error. So I'm going to get started with this first one. The first one here, you can see I'm in here in X schedule. The first thing I want to talk about is your Windows power settings. So if you hit the Windows button on your keyboard and I type the word power and sleep, see the power and sleep settings. The first thing that pops up is the power and sleep settings dialog. So on here it says screen. I wanna make sure that you do these two things. Number one, make sure that when plugged in, turn off after, and this is your screen, make sure it's set to never. Don't, don't let your screen shut off, okay? The second thing is sleep never let your PC go to sleep. So those are the two things in Windows that you need to be aware of, okay? The other thing that you should be aware of is that sometimes you're going to have some um, stuttering or something might happen like that. This is where a lot of people may have issues. If you go into X Schedule and you click on the Edit Options button, one of the options that I want you to make sure that you do is click on force IP. Your computer may have multiple adapters and let's bring it up real quick. I'll hit the windows button here and I'll type network and we'll just click on network status. Hopefully that brings it up. Change adapter options. This one, this is usually my go-to. So I have two adapters here and you see right here it says ethernet and the other one says Wi-Fi. And what you see is, is that I'm connected to the internet. I am dialed in right now to my show computer through Wi-Fi. I have this running a separate network adapter, which is connected to the back of the computer, or in your case, you may have a laptop. And this ethernet adapter has an IP address configuration. If I open this up and I click on properties and I go to TCP IP version four, you can see here that I have an IP address set for this computer so that it outputs exactly the data from a specific IP address that I want it to. So you can see it says 192.168.1.1. I'll go ahead and close this. And what I want you to do is in your options, you can set your IP address to force the data from X schedule that the that is built into your FSEQ file to go out a specific, a funneled specific IP. And that specific IP happens to be this network adapter right here. Okay, so we're physically telling X schedule that I only want you to run the data out of the ethernet 
this IP address, okay? Now, my Wi-Fi is a different IP. It might be one of these other ones here. It might be one of these. So I don't want it to go out there. I want it to go out the one for just the show network. This is probably the first um, the, the first thing that you want to do whenever you start realizing that you have issues with X schedule. This should um, alleviate some of these situations for you. Uh, while we're in the options box, the other thing that you can also do, and it, it's kind of redundant, but you can do this. See how this checkbox is here? It says keep computer screen on. You can add that checkbox there. That's a helpful setting. So that's the X Lights options screen. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, the next thing that I want to discuss with you guys is using something called DDP. For many of you, uh, maybe you haven't been in the hobby as long. Some of you have been in the hobby longer than others. We use a, a, uh, a data protocol. A, a, and a data protocol, it's nothing more than a way that we communicate through networking from one computer to another set of computers, which are controllers or mini computers. We use what is called E131 data to go from X lights out to our controllers and that's generally what we've been doing for the past uh, like forever since I've been in the hobby and what X schedule will do or FPP for that matter will do is it'll take the the data from X lights use uh, scrunch it up into a file called the FSEQ and that FSEQ file gets that E131 data into DMX mode and it magically goes out to all your computers so what you need to understand is, is that there are more efficient ways to send data out now because the community and the hobby has grown so much. There has been a new data protocol that's been created and it's called DDP. Now I'm going to bring over my X lights layout and show you that this might be something that you want to do, especially if your controllers support DDP. Not all controllers will support it, but many will. So for example, I have FPP uh, as a controller. It's, I, use, I use a Raspberry Pi that is in bridge mode. It's an older version of x -Lite, and that runs my P10 uh, Tune 2 sign. So here you see, excuse me, uh, now you can see the Tune 2 sign, and you can see that it runs off of the protocol DDP. Now, many controllers support this, but not all of them do, as I said. So it's important that you come to your controller tab, you click on your specific controller, and if it is an FPP controller, then you probably already have this uh, built into it, especially if it's updated to the latest and greatest. So uh, what I wanna show you is over here on the right hand side straight up, straight up above me, you'll see that each controller has its own protocol. So if you are running, let's say at a higher frame rate, like you're running 20 frames or 40 frames per second or 60 frames per second, change to DDP and maybe some of that stuttering uh, issue that you might have seen maybe that's one of the things that will get cleared up because data is being sent out there's a lot of data in these packets and if you have a big show you have a lot of p10 panels p5s and so forth uh, you know virtual matrices maybe this will help with your data transfer is switching over to ddp now some controllers do not have ddp yes i know it's kind of disappointing i have some falcon f16 v2s and I've had them for years. And the idea that you can not change to anything else but E131 or Artnet is sort of disappointing. Um, I'm not sure about the AlphaPix controllers. I'm not sure that the Pixlites, uh, the Advitech Pixlite controllers will, or uh, even that the Hinx Pix will do that. So maybe you need to check that DDP does in fact work with your controller. And if it does, you probably want to change over to DDP as the way that you set up your controllers in X Lights. The next thing that I want to discuss with you folks is the um, is the dreaded Windows update. Now, Windows is well known for causing havoc just because it has this automatic Windows update that after a certain amount of time of pushing it off, that if you don't do it, Windows will automatically reboot your computer and it will stick you at a a start screen whenever it reboots and your computer won't reboot fully and therefore your show won't start 
usually Windows updates only happens once a month. You only need to worry about it once a month. So if you start in November, do it in November before Thanksgiving, before your show starts or whenever your opening night is, okay? Then do it again in December. And the reason why I say do it again in December is because usually the first week you're working out all the bugs in your show and everything. Now it's the middle of December and you get that little thing that pops up, like let's say down here below, that maybe there's a little pop-up that says, hey, you have a Windows update. And well, if, if it pops up and you're not paying attention, you may not realize that you need to do one. So you need to double check into, Jan uh, into December to see if you need to do a Windows update. Now to manually do one, there we go. So I, what I have right now is I have this checking for Windows updates. And, and what Windows will do is it will say, hey, there's updates available. And if there are, go ahead and run the updates. Just, just let it do its thing. The best time to run an update is after your show is done for the day or at least an hour before your show starts. So if you start your show at 5.30, 4.30, you get home from work. Or if you can get home that early, then by all means, do an update or wait until later on in the day when you do have the time, it's 1030 at night or so, and you can safely run Windows Update because you never know if Windows doesn't restart the computer and bring it right back to Windows and you don't have X schedule set to open up. The next day you come home and the show's not running, you're going to be wondering what's going on. So just a little bit of advice, do your Windows updates, check them twice through the season. So in this section of the video, I want to talk tonight. So now we're in the part of the video where I want to talk about something called what I would call the frequently asked questions about challenges or issues with X schedule. And one of the most common questions that people will say is my show is shimmering. As soon as the lights come on, everything is shimmering. What's going on? Well, let me share with you exactly what most likely is causing the issue, especially if you're like me and you like to test your show as you're setting it up before the show actually comes on. Let me get out of the way here. And um, so here you see a bars pattern. This is my home show, this is my home layout, and I have output to lights on. Well, what happens is, is when I'm putting my show up and I'm, I have my controllers out there and plugging things in and I'm just seeing the bars test, make sure everything's working right. The next thing I, I notice is that all of a sudden, everything just starts to shimmer. Now, I don't have speakers in my garage. Uh, I don't hear the music. The music only pumps out through the FM radio uh, transmitter. But what I've learned is, is that if I have my schedule set to run at a specific time and it comes on while I'm doing my bars test, I get this shimmer. So most likely what's going on is you need to either shut off uh, X lights, you need to turn it off, you need to turn off output to lights, or you need to stop all on your scheduler. And once you do, the shimmering will stop. And you can either continue testing like I would do, or you could quit testing for the day, go inside and let the show do its thing and get back to it the next day. So the next the next section I want to talk about in frequently asked questions is, is what are some of the things that I can do to help solve my lag issues? Well, number one, I would first try restarting your computer. Yes, I know. Everybody always says, did you try turning it off and turning it on again? Well, I hate to and say it, sometimes Windows um, takes over your computer and does Windows things in the background. And that takes away... Uh, resources that can run your show so all you need to do is give windows a fresh reboot and some of those issues will probably subside and go away another thing to consider is if you're outputting your data through your wi-fi card or you're sending data out wirelessly x lights doesn't do well actually uh, sending data wirelessly isn't a reliable way to get data to all your controllers. If you have a large show, you might be able to run one or two or three different devices with Wi-Fi. But if you're having quite a bit of, of issues, I wouldn't run Wi-Fi from your computer out to your show unless you really know what you're doing and you have the good qual high quality equipment that is required to do that. The, the general people, the general users like myself, I'm not going to run my show with a Wi-Fi cart. I'm going to run it with an E131 network, a solid network. And that's the best way that I can tell you to make sure you run your show. So the third way that you might consider uh, 
kind of updating things to see if there's an issue is maybe get a couple of network cables and replace your main network cable that goes from your computer out to your main switch or to your first controller. You may have a bad network cable. I know you just bought the thing or you just crimped it. You just made it. It's brand new. You've made a million cables before. Trust me, sometimes you can make a bad cable. Sometimes the cable we get is bad. And it's always good to have spare cables ready to go so you can go plug them in and test them out to see if that could be the problem. If you have a computer, let's say it's 2024, if you have a computer that has been made within the past 10 years, X Lights and X Schedule is probably going to be just fine to run on it. But if you have like 8 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM, that's pretty common today, more than common today. You can get 32 gig RAM computers. You don't need a beefy computer to run X Schedule, but if you have an older one, you may need to update or have something that's just a bit newer. Now, I know people will say, well, if I have to update a computer, I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use FPP. I understand. Do what you've got to do to make your show run. But if you have really old hardware, consider that maybe it, because it is a little older, it doesn't have the resources or the memory or the bandwidth or whatever to be able to reliably put out the data. We're using uh, computers that were built in uh, 2014, 2013, 2016. Uh, for the shows that have uh, some of the shows that we started running five years ago, they're still running fine. Yeah, they're a little slower than the newer computers, but they still do the job and they're still reliable. But if they're older than that, if they're older than 2013, 2012, you might have something like a Core 2 Duo. Yeah, that might be time to retire that and maybe move up to something else and that might help you. If you're still experiencing some lag, one of the other things that you might try is updating your computer's network adapter. Now, this isn't for the faint of heart. If you're not a computer person, maybe you need to ask somebody who can give you a hand with it. For example, in my case, the computer that you're looking at right now, this, this screen that's around me, this that X schedule is showing behind me on, this computer is my show computer. And back in 2018, I built this computer. It's a show computer. It doesn't do anything but run this show. It's in a box in the basement with a uh, with a little old monitor on it that it's not even 1080p. It's just it's just enough to make the show run. But it has, I think, 32 gigs of RAM. It has a Ryzen 7 1700X processor in it. It really is a 2017 PC. And I have no problems running my show off of it, but I did in 2018 when I found out that the motherboard needed to have the network adapter that's built onto the board updated with new firmware. So it might be the case that you have to manually go in to your device settings and update the driver just for your network adapter. And you may even have to, if you can't get your network adapter to work correctly, you may have to buy another one. You can always consider picking up something like this. Now you might not be able to see this, but this is, this is a network adapter that is pluggable into USB. And what that will do is it'll be another way for you to send data out. So you might have a bad network adapter on your computer and this is 15, 20 bucks, 10 bucks, $12, somewhere, something like that. You can pick up one of these, plug it in, and it's a different adapter. And of course, you'd have to update it in X schedule if you force the IP. You'd have to set the IP address for this as well. And you could send data out through this and possibly relieve all of that lag that you're having. So the last uh, kind of suggestion for lag that I can give you in this frequently asked questions section might have something to do with how many controllers are in your show and how you've got them networked. Now, this is probably for most people not going to be the issue, but in some cases it's something for you to definitely be very aware of. Let me get out of the way here and I'll bring up, we have this little diagram that I've created. And so to my right here, I have a diagram of a network hop. This is a what I call the hop chart. And so for example, you see right here, you have a show computer. What I want you to realize is that 
when we network our computers uh, with our show, that network data is pretty strong, but it's only so strong. You want to limit the number of daisy chains, or hops as we call them, to six. So whenever you come off of the main switch, that means that from one output on the network switch, that you only want to have six peripherals, six controllers in series, hopping from one to the next, or daisy chain from one to the next. So in the diagram that you see to my right, you're looking at uh, controller one, two, three, four, five, and six. At the last one, it's not recommended to go any further. So the reason that you would want to stop at the end of the six hop is because after six hops, your network data through these smaller controllers that don't have the power, we'll say, that the main network switch does may not be as strong and the further down the line the signal will begin to degradate. So we've had uh, some people uh, try this on their own. They've connected maybe 10, 11, 12, 13 controllers in a series, in hops, and connected a daisy chain together. We've had this happen, and when they've gone and unplugged maybe the third or fourth one, the show stops shimmering. And the reason being is, is because that data is being funneled down through one line as opposed to utilizing the network switch that you see here, which has multiple outputs. Just keep in mind that from the main switch, you want to have six hops, no more. No more than six hops or no more than six uh, daisy chains. Now, if you have a second switch, and I actually do this in my show, I have a main network switch in the middle that comes off of the sh uh, off of the computer. I have three network switches, one on the left side of my house, one in the middle of my house, and one on the right side of my house. And I have those all three daisy chained off of the main network switch that connects directly to my show computer. That's one hop. So this is this is your main. This is one hop. And now I will never go more than plugging one controller in and then one here, one here, one here, and one here. That's five hops that I allow myself to go because if we look at the six hop after the six hop, we can expect that there could be possible signal degradation and you might see some shimmering, lagging, or some issues with the data playing. Well guys, I hope this video was helpful, informative, and it brought to light some things that maybe you haven't tried yet whenever you were using XSchedule. I've been using XSchedule since 2017 when Keith brought it out. Um, it has been, for me, it's been very easy to deal with. Yes, I've had small issues with it, but I've learned from those small issues, and now we use it in multiple projects across the country, and it's never failed us for doing a good job to run the show. So guys, if you have any questions or if this video did help you, give us some comments and feedback down below. Let us know how we did. If you liked the video, please give us a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the big subscribe button down below as well and share the video. If anything has helped you in this video, please share it with other people who are having challenges or issues with getting things working for them. And as always, if you appreciate the things that we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, please consider joining the PPD Sequence Club where we sequence a brand new, new to the store sequence each and every month for all of our PPD Club members. And not only that, there's a huge number of savings through our vendor affiliate discounts page. Don't forget to check and see that Matos Designs and Boscoyo Studios and Wizard of Wire and uh, Culp Lights including David Peace at Experience Lights. All of these are affiliate vendors, trusted affiliates from Pixel Pro Displays who offer something more to everyday people just like you. If you're in the PPD Sequence Club, join and take advantage of those discounts. Guys, thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now. Welcome back to Twinkle Tips Friday, folks. Clyde here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for joining us this Friday and any day that you're watching the video. Stay tuned. We've got X-Schedule news coming right up.
we don't have X schedule news. <laughs> um, okay, take two. Specific controller, and if it is an FPP controller, it's probably already, if you haven't updated to the latest and greatest, it's probably, <laughs> it's probably already labeled, uh, <laughs> can't talk. Um, if you have.